all the conservatives in the rooms. They would want you to believe that you can't have government involved in stuff. It's socialism. We can't have government helping people. We can't have government helping people, giving them a hands up. Oh, no, 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 we can't do that. That is socialism, right? We, we preach that. They want us to believe that. They want us to settle for less and less and less. But now that we have a supply chain problem, now that we have a trucking problem, guess who is solving the problem? And you won't hear industry saying much. You won't hear industry saying, oh, thank you, government, for doing, for doing what we didn't do because we're too greedy. You won't see that. I want you to listen to Pete Buttigieg and the president. And then I have quite a bit to say afterwards. But this is important. And please listen to it in the proper context. Let's get busy with this one. And we just completed the 90-day sprint to get these actions off the ground, so I'm pleased to provide an update. In order to create debt-free pathways into the career for more people, including more women and drivers of color, we teamed up with the Department of Labor to grow the number of registered apprenticeships for high-quality paid on-the-job training. We're investigating truck leasing arrangements to make sure that they're above board. We're working on truck driver pay, including those hours when drivers don't get paid even though they're very much on the job because they're waiting for somebody else. We're making it easier for veterans to join the trucking workforce, partnering with the Department of Defense. And of course, we are fixing roads and bridges across America. One trucker told me infrastructure is our workplace. And now we are enhancing that workplace thanks to unprecedented funding through the president's infrastructure law. And yes, that includes working with states to use that funding to build more safe truck parking because we know that that is such a central issue for truckers today. These actions are going to help us recruit more drivers and, just as importantly, retain them. To help keep down shipping delays, rein in the price of goods at a time when we're fighting inflation with everything we've got, and, of course, supporting these essential workers is just the right thing to do. I'm proud of all we got done in this 90-day sprint, uh, but I promise you to the trucking community, and I promise you, Mr. President, this is just the beginning. Over the course of my presidency, the economy has now created 7.9 million jobs, more jobs in the first 14 months than any president ever, in large part because of all of you, not a joke. Unemployment's at 3.6 percent, down from 6.4 when we took office. The fastest decline in unemployment at the start of any presidential term ever recorded. And after a long stretch, Americans are back to work. Americans are back to work. An economy has gone from being on the mend to being on the move. And the economy we're building, we're building a strong economy, one where hardworking Americans can live with dignity, support their families, build a better life, and a better life for their children as well. All of you here today are people our economy should be built around because you all, you all are the people who literally make it run. I have nothing against investment bankers. They could all retire and nothing much would change. You all quit, everything comes to a halt. Think about it. I'm, I'm not joking. During the pandemic, a lot of Americans have been introduced to a term you all know well, and Pete used it, supply chains. A simple term, supply chain is a journey, the journey of a product to get to a customer's doorstep. That's what it is. And during the pandemic, those chains were interrupted. Factory closures around the world, not just the United States, around the world caused backups and delays because of COVID. At the same time, because of the strength and speed of our recovery, Americans had more money in their pockets than they had in a long time. During the pandemic, they wanted to spend that money not on restaurants or vacations, which are now coming back as well, but on hard goods. They wanted home improvements, televisions, automobiles, things that had to be transported. The very products are slowed down by disruption of the supply chain. Demand was high. Supply was interrupted, and the recipe for higher prices and long delays. That's exactly what we saw not only here, but all around the world. So we knew we needed every tool at our disposal to address the problem. And the best way to do it was to invest in people who make the supply chain run. Trucking moves about 70 percent, about 70 percent of all the goods in this country, 70 percent. And truck drivers, are facing real challenges. 
The average driver waits four and a half hours for their truck to be loaded and unloaded during an 11-hour shift and 40 percent of their day. And they often they don't get paid for that wait time. Back in 1978, the average truck driver's pay was $34, was $34 an hour in today's dollars. Last year, it was $25 an hour, nearly a 30 percent decline. In this iconic American industry, it's getting harder and harder to raise a family with dignity and pride that you deserve. And it's no surprise so many drivers left their jobs. The workforce is getting older. But look, it's getting harder and harder to recruit new drivers, particularly women and people of color, to an industry that this nation and our economy desperately needs at full strength. The good news is that since I took office, we've begun to turn things around. In fact, in 2021 was the best year for trucking employment since 1994. There are now 35,000 more trucking jobs than there were before the pandemic. But we all know we need to move faster, getting more people working in this industry and jobs they can rely on and raise a family on. That's why last December, we brought together industry and labor to tackle the problem facing drivers. And we listened. And when we heard that there were long wait times in many states for people to get their commercial driver's license, their CDLs, we took action. We provided technical assistance as well as $57 million in federal funds to help states issue these CDLs faster. And I'm proud to report, because of Pete and others, so far in 2022, we're issuing CDLs at double the rate of last year. 120,000 in January and February alone. We also know that the key ingredient to getting and keeping more drivers was increasing training programs like the registered apprenticeships approved by the Department of Labor. Programs that allow aspiring drivers to learn while earn while they learn, while making this essential job more attractive for potential drivers, regardless of age, background, and gender. The program has proven to be improved safety and better working conditions, and better pay and benefits. Typically, it takes about eight months to create a registered apprenticeship program. But because of Pete and others in the Department of Labor, we're able to cut the red tape, and now it takes as little as two days. In the last 90 days, 100 major employers have launched new registered apprenticeship programs. UPS, Domino's, Pepsi's, Albertsons, and more along with the trade associations like the American Trucking Association, the National Minority Trucking Association, the Food Industry Association, and others. What that all adds up to is a strong foundation for the work ahead, a pipeline of hardworking men and women from all backgrounds, highly trained and highly motivated to get behind the wheel, including a whole lot of veterans thanks to the Veterans Trucking Initiative known as Task Force Movement by Patrick Murphy, led by Patrick Murphy. But look, the, the Labor and Labor and Transportation Departments are working closely with industry to tackle issues facing women in trucking, recruit and retrain more women drivers. So we can draw more Americans to work with increased wages, reduce wait times, and improve safety, and so much more. Folks, there's a heck of a lot more we have to do, a lot more we have to do. Secretary Buttigieg has laid out some of the steps we're taking to make these jobs more attractive for more Americans. And it's all centered around listening to you, the drivers. Look, you've got to keep it, we've got to keep it going. We're building a better economy around American manufacturing and American supply chains. And thanks to the infrastructure law, and it wasn't my law, it was a bipartisan, one of the few great bipartisan things we've done this year. We're making the largest investment in American roads and bridges since literally the creation of the interstate highway system. And that means a bright future for American trucking. This, this country will be counting on you more than it ever has. So we should be able to, you should be able to count on us to keep investing in you and your families. Here's my take on this, first of all. Kudos to the administration. They are, go they are providing welfare to the private sector. Really, Egberto? Why are you saying that? I want to show you how greedy the private sector is as they want to blame government for everything. Is government working smoothly as it should? No. But you know, when, 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 you're always, when all you have on your mind is, 
I don't want to pay taxes and government has to live within the domain of not spending the money necessary to invest in things. That's what you get. But here is the most obscene thing. I don't see how Biden goes on national TV and talks the way he does about we are doing these great things for the supply chain, which he is, but shouldn't have to. Let's, let's be clear here. I want you to let's, let's break down what just happened, what, they, what Pete Buttigieg said, and what the president has said as well. This is important. One, the most important part, the most important thing you need to know right now. Truck drivers in today's dollars were making 30 something dollars, about 34, 35 bucks, 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. And today they are making 25 bucks. What that means, is that the productivity that you saw on Wall Street when they said transportation, productivity in transportation, that was on the backs of the drivers. The drivers were taking home less money. They just took the money from the drivers, the corporations, that is. That's number one. Number two, they have a supply chain problem because you don't have enough drivers, because you don't pay them enough, and because of your, you, you sillily, over more, oh, uh, you offshored all your production. You created just-in-time inventory, which means if there's a lag in, in getting your transportation from wherever you're getting transport from, including overseas, wherever you get transport from, if there's a delay because you have just-in-time inventory, you get shortages. If you get shortages, people are willing to pay more to make sure they get it and the other person doesn't get it. That's called inflation. Inflation generated by the failure of the corporatocracy, not, not generated by we the people who are doing our jobs, right? So here we go. We have where now the president and Pete Bo and his administration are now going to subsidize veterans, women, people of color, all these people that have not generally had the resources to go ahead and get CDLs, etc., training, etc. The government's going to subsidize them. Wait a minute. Who is that? Who's, who are they subsidizing them for? The people who are getting the job? No. They are actually subsidizing the private sector. Because the private sector now says, I get a discount on training. It's the same thing with college education. It used to be you pay your taxes so that you can go to college at a low cost. Corporation paid a lot of taxes. Everybody paid taxes. People went to college, got educated on the cheap. And then they were brought back into the system, to the corporations. And you don't feel bad that you, sub that the, that you educated the people who did work for the corporation and made profit for people. That's fine. But now the corporations don't want to educate you. They don't want to pay taxes for public universities. They want you to get a loan from another corporation. So you are going to pay your education. You're going to pay the interest rates for the loans you take for your education. So you're enriching at corporations for taking the education that you need to get a job where you are not, where he didn't pay taxes for your education. So you, you got to his front door educated, meaning that's a cost he doesn't have. And then he just take it all to the bank. People, the biggest problem here I see is people don't itemize and go through one at a time how these systems really put the onus on the average American system, uh, uh, the average American person every single time. The corporations always comes out ahead. We created a supply chain problem. We come out ahead by having ra raising interest rates. We, we paid uh, uh, truckers less, we still come out ahead because you know what? The government gonna step in to make sure that we drop inflation because now we're gonna have more truck, more truckers and the supply train, chain is gonna get better. Folks, they want you, the reason they keep you uneducated, the reason you see Republicans and neoliberal Democrats all the time, they don't want to invest in getting you too smart. Because if you understood how the system works, how you always paid the bill, I always tell my personal story. We just had a woman who talks about story and it went like this. In the days when I had my company, the software company, 
I create a piece of software that could do something that nobody else in the country was doing. It was called dropping the RTS sig signal within a few milliseconds for an 8050, uh, 80, 8059 chip that couldn't do it. Okay? It's a serial chip. And that, I was able to sell a whole ton of that software. Boeing used it in its test equipment. And when Boeing said, I want a, I don't remember it was an unlimited uh, license or a, a 10,000 copy license. I don't remember what it was. I said, okay, and I charged him a whole bunch for it. And you know how I am. I feel guilty for it. Anytime I feel like a capitalist, I start to feel guilty, right? And I'm like, God, you know. Then, I, then, then to justify myself, I said, ah, but that's a big corporation and they can handle that, right? And then I started to think and I said, my God, it's never the corporations who handle it. It's never the corporations who pay. It is always the person without pricing power. And that's the person at the bottom of the totem pole. The person who buys the airline ticket paid for that overpriced product. It's the person that doesn't have a say in that they're going to pay $5 a gallon for gasoline, even though it's not their fault. And still, we have people who want to defend the corporations who has the price and power and the choice not to take your money away. The choice to still make a profit for shareholders, to still make a bonus, but because they have price and power and you have nothing. You are an indentured servant. You are an antiseptic slave because you have no say. They can do as they please. And then whenever you, whenever you ask them, why are you doing that? It's government's fault. They buy government, elect neoliberals. They, 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 they screw up the, the supply chain. They underpay. Remember, there's a guy who had an ice cream place. He was paying seven twenty-five an hour. Then he, he jumped it up to eight bucks an hour. He couldn't get anybody to work during the pandemic. He went to fifteen dollars an hour. He couldn't handle the, the applications. We don't have a labor shortage. We have a shortage of corporations paying people what they're worth. And for all of you who are out there singing the song of the corporation, you are more a slave than anybody else. Because you have, bought, you have bought into the lie, the figment of the imagination that they put into your, they inculcated into your brain. Please folks, share these products. Share these, 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 these videos. Let's, let's get people smarter. Let's let them understand what, how this system really works. It has nothing for, it is... The, the, the current layout, even Biden had a beautiful speech. Biden is going to fix the supply chain problem. He's going to get a lot of truckers on the road. And he has. He has made it a lot easier. He has invested in, in, in these bills to put more truckers on the road. But you know what? You paid for it. You paid for it as opposed to the corporation who raised your prices and got you nothing other than taking your money and giving it to shareholders and executive bonuses, going on to Wall Street and said, look how much we made. And we even shipped less product and made more. We have oil. We have an overflow of oil. But you know what? We're not going to pump it. We're not going to turn on those spigots that are, that are not running in, in Texas or in, in Arkansas or in Pennsylvania. We're going to leave them shut. You know why? We keep the product and we charge more. Folks, when you realize that you've been had, and I'm, I'm hoping people start to understand the things that I talk about. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.